the world knows under President Trump's administration, we had energy independence. In fact, we had energy dominance. What this president has done uh, is to destroy that energy independence, to make our country dependent on places in the world that hate America and want to destroy the American dream. Your vote has consequences. It impacts every aspect of our lives, everything from transportation, heating our homes, to, by the way, food on the shelves in the grocery stores. We must remember this at the polls. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. And today we have with us a very dynamic, courageous, a much admired guest, my friend, Martha Bonetta Fain. And Martha is someone that I really draw inspiration from, from her tenacity, her positive attitude, and her commitment to America. Now, a little background about Martha. Her childhood dream was to be a farmer. And when a combination of activists and entrenched government interests got in her way of her dream, she refused to give up. Martha has since been a principal at Capital Keys, regarded as one of Washington, D.C.'s top public affair firms, and a security policy advisor to America First Policies. Martha Bonetta, thank you so much for joining me here today. Martha Bonetta Fain, I should say. Thank you for being with yes. us. Yes. It's my absolute pleasure. I am uh, a huge fan of yours, Rebecca, and also of AMAC and the millions of people that you give a platform and a voice to. It's just an honor to know you and to be on your show again. Thank you. Oh, uh, well, thank you so much. And you've been about, uh, around and about. You've appeared numerous times on Fox and Friends, Fox Business, uh, Neil Cavuto, along with a number of other print and media programs. You are definitely a friend of ours. And Martha, I had the great honor of spending a few days with you uh, at the American Freedom Tour. You are co-chair of the American Freedom Tour. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about the American Freedom Tour? Because we, we posted over the weekend uh, and shared some really great mm -hmm. footage. You had an amazing turn turnout. Tell us what you're doing. So the, Amer the American Freedom Tour brings uh, one of the America's greatest leaders to cities all across our country, including the greatest president of my lifetime, President Donald John Trump. And in doing so, we inspire and give hope to millions of Americans that feel as though, and rightfully so, that all of the incredible accomplishments under the Trump administration have, have, been, have been destroyed under the current administration. And we are actively engaged in activating communities across the country to give hope to Americans, to get out the vote, and to remind this administration that they serve we the people. And in doing so, we give Americans the tools that they need to go out into their communities and to really fight for freedom in the American dream. I do think that one person can give so much courage to another. And we do live in a time of extreme censorship. I do want to talk a little bit about what we saw, the Twitter files. And for those who are listening, I'm sure that they're up uh, and aware, uh, that is, of what's happening. Uh, Elon Musk, that is, uh, is he, my question for you, Martha, is Elon Musk setting the stage for a reckoning on the 2020 interference. Uh, that's my question for you, because it seems that um, the first round of emails that he's released was quite shocking. I mean, I always suspected that there was something going on. We knew that they were, that the Democrats were in bed with big tech. But when we saw to what extent, and I do want to just, I do want to just highlight this for our listeners, um, Twitter staff and executives began to find more and more uses for these tools, these censorship tools. Outsiders began petitioning the company to manipulate speech as well, first a little, then more often, then constantly. What do you make of all of this, Martha? Well, you know, uh, silencing conservatives is something that every American should be concerned about because this has been going on for far too long. And what Twitter did was put these warnings, just like Facebook does, by the way. So, you know, this is happening across social media platforms. And the idea behind it is to silence conservatives, to silence the conservative voice. And what this reveals is that this was a concentrated effort 
to to change the course of history in our elections. And we believe that this is just the beginning. Uh, I believe that this is going to open up. Uh, that, you know, all eyes are going to be on what happened during the election to suppress the vote and suppress conservatives voice. So, yes, I, I'm very hopeful. And I think this is just the beginning. I want to pivot for a minute and ask you a little bit about what's happening on the energy front, because we see what's happening. You know, winter is hitting homes harder than ever, and some are even comparing their daily lives to the to the days that they lived in 2008 during the 08 recession. And um, people are making decisions. You know, they're saying, do I turn on my heat or do I buy groceries? And it's so heartbreaking to me to know that this is going on right here in our backyard. So if the nation, if our nation has the largest recoverable oil reserves in the world, why, in your opinion, is our president allowing uh, our communities to crumble and citizens to choose whether they should freeze or, or starve this winter? It's outrageous. And uh, as you know, and as the world knows, under President Trump's administration, we had energy independence. In fact, we had energy dominance. We were producing an extraordinary amount of oil and gas production, which made us independent and an energy leader around the globe. What this president has done uh, is to destroy that energy independence, to make our country dependent on places in the world that hate America and want to destroy the American dream. It is part of an effort, I believe, to take away America as being the greatest hope for the world. And we need everybody to remember this at the polls and to remember that, you know, your vote has consequences and and not voting for Republicans, not voting for an America first platform that puts the American people first, that puts American energy first, has consequences. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. It's heartbreaking. It's devastating. And I fear that it's going to get worse. So we have two years before the next presidential election. And it's my hope and my prayer that every American, when they're out the polls, will remember this very issue of energy independence. It impacts every aspect of our lives, everything from transportation, heating our homes, to, by the way, food on the shelves in the grocery stores. It impacts everything we do. And that's why it is so important. Elections have consequences. We must remember this at the polls. They certainly do. And and it it just makes such sense for us to take care of our own business right here in America. We've got tremendous opportunities. We ought to be putting America first. We loved that about our president, Donald J. Trump. He was a very strong president. Many of our members are concerned, Martha. They're, They're wondering if any of these lawsuits that are hitting him from every single angle Uh, might be enough to impact his return to the White House. Do you think that these terrible uh, lawsuits and the persistence of the left uh, to really uh, do everything they can to destroy uh, President Trump, do you think uh, that that will prevent him from really being able to um, uh, do what he promises the American people that he'll do? I do not. We've seen this time and time again. These are, this is an attempt to thwart and to stop President Trump from running for re-election because the bad guys know that when when President Trump runs, he has the voice of every American and also of the entire globe. And they want to stop him from doing that. And time and time again, we know that these efforts have been false news, fake news, from the Russia, 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 to all of the other things that have been thrown at the wall, and there's been nothing there, nothing at all. We all know that there were shenanigans and outright voter fraud and suppression uh, in the last election, and we're not going to let that happen again. And we're not going to yeah. allow these these uh, these ridiculous lawsuits to keep the American people from exercising their will at the polls. That's absolutely right. And for those who are who are thinking, well, there's no real proof, I encourage you to watch 2,000 Mules. Yes. That'll show you a lot of what went on. Uh, and, and we saw what happened in, in Arizona with Carrie Lake, and we see this continuing. So my hope is that, um, well, we here at AMAC will continue to work on the election integrity front. We had over 12,000 AMAC members that stepped up as poll watchers. This will be especially important. We've got to make sure that we've got secure elections, that they're free and fair, that every legal vote counts. And we are so focused on that. What kind of hope 
do you have for the future, Martha? I mean, before I let you run, you know, every time I'm with you, Martha, you've got such an optimistic attitude. I know that you're focused squarely on America First policies. Amen. What hope do you have for the future? How hopeful are you? I'm very hopeful. Most Americans vote with their pocketbooks, whether you're Republican, independent, undecided, libertarian, no matter what you believe in, no matter the color of your skin, most Americans vote with their pocketbooks. Do I have enough money to feed my family, have a roof over my head, put gas in the car so I can go to work? Basic everyday kitchen table issues. And what Americans are experiencing now is a reminder, again, that your vote has a significant impact and there are unintended consequences. And we're seeing it right now. The American dollar is not worth what it used to be. It's not going as far as it did under President Trump. And I can tell you that as I travel across the country and I speak with thousands and thousands of Americans, I hear the same thing every single day. We wish President Trump was back in the White House. Our dollar went farther. Our retirement plan was more robust. We had more hope for the future. And my, my words for everybody listening is to have hope, have faith, We are winning the battle across our country, and President Trump will be in the White House again, and I can't wait. Thank you, Martha. Thank you so much for your fresh insight and your strong convictions, because America is certainly better off because of all that you are doing and fighting for. Uh, Thank you for that and for joining me today. Well, thank you. God bless you, and God bless AMAC. It was an honor and a privilege to have you present uh, to President Trump at Mar-a-Lago for the Winter Gala. The president, I know. It was amazing. Yes, I know he was so, so thankful and so grateful for your support and the support of of your members. It was a historic moment in American history. And I just want to say how grateful we are at the American Freedom Tour, how grateful we are that you support the America First platform and for everything you do every day to win back our country and to keep the American dream alive. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Martha Bonetta Fain, what a classy lady. Thank you again for being with us today. And I want to thank each and every one of you out there listening. Thank you for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this episode, you can listen to more just like it. Head to our YouTube channel or visit us at bfapodcast.us. And you can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, or by downloading our free AMAC News app. And don't forget to follow us wherever you are on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Have a great evening, everyone.